Hello, I'm William Broom and welcome to the panel shows Hear the Music and this week we're coming all the way from Douglas Park in the MacArthur region of New South Wales. We've got two very special guests on the show today, singers and songwriters, Ben Ransom and Rocco Bene. Welcome to the show both of you. G'day mate. How are you? It's great to have you. I am feeling absolutely wonderful, exhilarant and full of energy because both of you are on the panel shows Hear the Music. What more yeah, could you sense. want? And we've got a treat in store, two fabulous guests. But the first question, Rocco. Yes. I love you. I love Tell you. me about your music. My music, well, you know what? It comes from my heart. It's real. And I just want people to dance and experience what Rocco is all about. Just lose yourself in the music. How did you get into music? How, I, you know, I was watching the 19... I was actually obsessed with Paul Abdul when I was young. Um, I, my sister showed me the video clip to Opposites the Trap and she thought I'd love the cat, MC Scat Cat, and, but I fell in love with Paul Abdul. <laughs> and so all my posters were full of walls of like, every wall was full of yeah, Paul Abdul posters and um, yeah, that's how it all started. And then, then I was watching the American Music Awards in 1990 and I said, that's what I want to do. Yeah. And you did. And yes, I haven't, you know, reached the and you've got American it. Music Awards yet, but hey. I'll That's next year. That's next year. Ben, how about you? Tell us a bit about your music. Well, I kind of grew up listening to, sort of, you know, lots of different styles of music. I was exposed to, you know, a broad range of music, all the, all the way from sort of Irish folk to Australian pub rock to, you know, pop and ABBA and Kiss and everything in between. And, um, and it's funny, after I'd sort of been, you know, touring around a bit, the, the style that I fell into was um, pretty much a country rock sort of style of music and, uh, and that's where I sort of found my uh, niche and found my market and uh, found my fans and so, was, yeah. And you've been songwriting since you were 15, haven't you? Yeah, about then, yeah, I was a late bloomer. I talked to <laughs> friends and they say, oh yeah, I, you know, started playing guitar at age six or I started writing songs at, you know, 10, that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, maybe I'm blessed with natural immaturity, I don't know. Never. So. What were your school friends like? How did they react? Oh, well, I think it was, you know, a lot of blokes dreams to, you know, uh, be in a band and, uh, and become, you know, rock superstars, you know, growing up through school and that's what we did. And I, I think I started my first band at about age 15 wow. and, um, and it all sort of kicked off from there. And of course, you've had a broad range of musical influences, haven't you? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, you know, a bit of a musical family. Dad plays the bagpipes and um, the tin whistle. And uh, I think I'm pretty much the only one that um, uh, decided to do uh, music as, as a career. But um, but I had posters on the wall as well. And yeah, it's funny you mentioned Paula Abdul because it's a you know that song is a bit like the music industry. Is you know two step forward, one step back, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? You know. Um, yep. So, um, yeah, I grew up you with stars and eyes. I love did. Samantha I did. I got, I got suspended from school because of Samantha Fox. No. Yeah. I had t-shirts yeah. touch me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and they did. They did touch me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what got them in trouble. Yeah. That's it. Page four. Rocco, okay. right, I've got to ask. Kyle and Jackie O, yes. the Hot 30 Teen Star competition. Yes. How did that come about? Um, well, at the time, you know, I always listened to Kyle and Jackie O at night because um, they used to do their evening shows. Um, before they do breakfast and yeah they had this competition on and my manager at the time um, was like just enter the competition and then we won it so it was yeah and then from that um, we were able to get signed to Warner Brothers and it just all fell into place thank God. I'd love to know a bit more about the passion behind your yeah. music Rocco tell us. Uh, the passion you know I've always I've always have I don't know, I've always have this drive in me it's, it's just something to tell me to do it to do it you know um, and no matter how many people, you know, my family will go, oh, you know, you use, you know, second career, you are thinking about making money, and, um, and to me it's just like, it's just taking the chance. You've got one life, this is it, you know, you got to make it happen. Mm. That's pretty much it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. tell us yeah. Mm, about your passion. Um, did Rocco I, I sum it up the, pretty well? He really did, yeah, but, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of common threads there, but yeah. also the, the live performance, I think. Um, you know the energy that you get from mm. performing live and the interaction with the crowd, and um, and, and that's what I love. Mm. Yeah, you've both been overseas as part of your career. Ben, you went to Europe for a while, mm. and you had a residency in Soho. Yeah, oh, it was actually the um, it was down in Covent Garden, very yeah. central in Soho. Um, yes, uh, 
Yeah, and it was um, fantastic. They had a, a bar there with, um, you know, we'd play five nights a week, and uh, it, was, it was in nice. insane. <laughs> I bet you it was. was. You know, you get you get all these travellers come through, yeah. and it was like a BNS ball every night of the week. <laughs> it was crazy, but that was a lot of fun. And I think you you hone your skill or you, you learn your chops and you know uh, places like that. And it was a, a fantastic experience. How do British audiences compare to Australian oh, audiences? Incredible. And going through Europe. Um, you know, the, the audience is there, they love their music and they'll let you know that they love their music mm. and you come back to Australia and it <laughs> takes... Yeah. No, I thought, no, I'm totally five seconds in the bathroom, I'll have a chat <laughs> and then you forgot it. Hello, <laughs> Dubbo! Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but no, we've, we've found um, some great fans and so mm. um, they're all starting to come to the shows and so they're always a lot of fun. Fantastic. Rocco, you've been overseas. Tell us a bit about your experiences. Um, I've, 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 I've done a lot of recording um, overseas. Um, I just, so, a lot of songwriting, recording, development. Um, so I've worked with Tanya Doko in Sweden. I've worked with Rough Loaders in the UK um, and some other songwriters as well. So it's just, yeah, I know, just, you, you let life just naturally take you there to the people that you got to meet and you meant to write with and you know it's just mm. Europe is just like another world it's just everyone wants to make music and enjoy the process of, of um, yeah being a musician and I find Australia I love Australia at all mm. I'm not bad in Australia but it's sometimes it is difficult just to get projects done you know do you find that's because there's a lack of finance or lack of support I just think I think a lot of people don't want to finance their own music or I do find that a lot in Australia. Mm. Um, they always try to get something for free or, you know. But I think you, if you really believe in yourself, mm. then, you know, if you're putting money into yourself, then, you know, eventually someone else will look at that and go, you know what, it's worth putting money into as mm. well. There's a singer, I don't yeah. know if you've heard of her, called Kylie Minogue. Yeah, I don't know. I either. think she's Australian. I think so, yeah. But uh, she was in Neighbours or something. Yeah. But What's she that? said many years ago, about 20 years ago, that you've not really made it yeah. in the music industry until you've either had a career in the UK or the US. Yeah. How true do you think that is, Rocco? I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's very true. I, I, I think it, success comes in whatever form. So, like, it doesn't have to, like, you don't have to have a number one hit or... It's just, it's however you feel complete within yourself or your soul. Or, um, that's how, I mean, that's how I look at life at the end of the day with, with any dream that you have, you know? It's not about having international success, it's just making mm. yeah, yourself complete within. Would you agree, Ben? I do. It's about, um, you, know, you know, finding that uh, satisfaction within yourself, like what yeah. you were saying. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. The, the music industry has changed so much in, in recent years. Um, I didn't... I'm not sure, that'd be a whole nother segment, you know, talking <laughs> about the, mm. um, you know, how the state of the music industry these days. But um, I think everyone kind of chases um, uh, fame or success to some degree in markets like the US and Europe. Ben, in 2010 you released your first album, The Long Way. How yeah. difficult was it to release that first album? Well... Um, we, we actually didn't release that. That was a uh, that was like just a really expensive demo. <laughs> so, um, but there was a, a, a track from that that um, that got picked up and, and and did quite well and sort of you know launched things and and then I was able to go on and do the um, you know the, the the first debut solo album and all the you know to date it was, um, it's all been uh, independently done. You know you mentioned earlier about. Um, you know, financing these yeah. these things, and um, it was very so much a labour of love for you, wasn't it? Well, that's right. Yeah. Was yeah. there a reason why it wasn't released? That you uh, oh, I just us? didn't think it was good enough. Oh, you know, really? I, yeah. And it was just trying to find. It was sort of, you know, the, it, it was a bit all over the place. We didn't have a producer. It was all sort of self-produced. And um, how do and, you know when an album's not good enough? Well, I don't know. I think a lot of artists are their own worst critics, aren't they? And yeah. um, I don't know. I was, from that first single that we put out, and it did quite well, mm. I was able to sort of, you know, meet a, a great producer and sort of go on from there and then get the, the first album out and then um, sort of, here we are. I think also mm. with, well, with songs is like, sometimes it's just not ready to be released or, you know what I mean? It's, it's got to mm. find its way to the right producer, mm. to the right person who's, going to take it on board. Do you know what I mean? It's just, I mm. think each song has its own journey. and it's, it's, You can't put a time on it. 
You know, when, when it's meant to be released. Yeah, know? that's true. But yeah. your first single was a massive hit, wasn't it? It peaked at number it two on the Hot Country Top 50 chart. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, for a first, first time around, it was pretty good. Did so. you know you had a hit on your hands? Uh, well, I know that people liked the song when we'd play it live, and um, so that was cool. And um, I think, you know, if it translates live, it, you know, uh, quite often um, uh, radio like it. Mm. Uh, what do you think makes a hit? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a tough yeah, I'm still working on that. What do you reckon? I think, you know what? It's just. Mm. It's just whatever it's meant to be. It's, it's, mm. as, uh, uh, you know, it's very cliche, and everyone goes, you know, it's got to have a great hook and all that, which is true, but mm. I think it's just the timing of. It's just timing. I think if you've got a really good song that's strong, or. It could be mm. simple. It could be the most yeah. simplest song, um, but I think it's just, it just has to catch that right moment. Yeah, yeah. It's it's well the holes of the yeah. Swiss cheese slices of Swiss Swiss cheese yeah, line up kind of thing, you know. But um, I mean, it could be anything. You, there's there's so many different variables I think that go into it, you know. Do you think it has to be a song that's not only catchy, but the song that's going to touch people, something that's very personal? Yeah, I, I think. Um, um, I think this has got to be true to the artist. Like, mm. it just it could be it doesn't have to be personal. It could be something quirky or. Um, different, do you know what I mean? But it's just got to be true. It has to relate to the audience. Yeah, like the, yeah. the audience, the, the the person listening to it mm. has to You've relate to in some way. Out yeah. They've got to yeah. reach back. Mm. But Rocco, talking of songs that are quite powerful and poignant, you sang a song, The Day You Went Away. Yes. Tell us about that. It brought tears to my eyes. Oh, did it? I'm glad. Beautiful song. Um, well, I mean, growing up, I'd always love that song. It was sung by Wendy Matthews. Um, and it was probably one of my favourite songs, you know probably still to this day. Um, and unfortunately my mother passed away um, about two and a half years ago. And I guess that song, you know, and I wrote another song at the time for my best friend um, ended his life who I lived with um, four weeks prior to mom dying. Um, so basically I want to record these songs um, and just capture that moment in time vocally mm. where I was at or, you know what I mean? Just, so what I do hear back at that time, it's. It's captured and it's, yeah, it's just, I love that song. And we played at my some funeral and, oh. yeah, it was beautiful, yeah. And you've got another wonderful song, Lucky Star, which is, and again is yes. another cover. Yeah, yeah, which is a Madonna cover, yeah. And I've heard all about the video. Yeah, I was shot in, um, in Japan and, um, yeah, that track was never meant to be released. It was kind of just like put on YouTube and, you know, it's just, but then the DJ who I um, worked with, he's, he's a young boy and um, he never heard Lucky Star before. So when I did the vocals, I just sent him the vocals and he just created this track behind it and without mm. hearing the original. So, And then once the label heard it, they're like, this needs to be released and it's up quite well, so it's good. You've both got very different styles. Mm. What do you think unites you both? Because you're both sitting here and I saw you chatting before we started filming and you obviously got on quite well. There's a rapport there. What do you think unites artists of different genres? respect yeah and yeah. I think I think uh, musicians get each other yeah you know yeah, yeah. Um, and it doesn't like, yeah. it doesn't matter what you know it's like a hidden language genre almost. Almost. well some of them yeah. are like that yeah. some of them can be very like judgmental or, nice. you know you know what I mean but it's like whatever <laughs> what makes them happy but you've both won competitions. We talked mm. about you, Carl and Jackie. Yeah. And you have too, a, a competition for Toyota in 2012. I oh, yeah, the, I was part of that, um, the star maker, but I, I didn't actually win that. But um, the following year, um, the, the uh, Southern Star Awards. Of you were a finalist, to, weren't you? Yeah, I was a finalist mm. in Star Maker. And that's great. And it's a, mm. a great platform for um, artists to la launch in the country industry. Um, and uh, you know, some fantastic competitions around. I've never been in anything like you know the TV shows and that kind of thing. I'm sort of you know a bit wary of that. You know, I've s deliberately stayed away from that. From my that next scene. question, which I'll yeah. ask you in uh, just a sec, because yeah. I, I'm fascinated by that. Because all we see on the TV mm. are reality shows. Yeah. What do you think of? Things like X Factor, Australian you know, Idol. You know what? I've I've auditioned. I've asked me to audition for these shows. I just think they they, they never want an artist who's already developed. Like they mm. never give a chance to an artist who has actually has everything going for them mm. behind the scenes and who just need that that one percent extra step. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I just yeah. That's that's what kind of 
after kind of realizing that for myself, it kind of goes, you know, it, it's, there's, there's no point in me trying to enter these competitions or, you know, it's just not who I am. And mm. yeah, if you achieve success in your own right, like getting signed to a label, yeah. um, mm. that's a huge success. Do you know what I mean? Even with you, like yeah. having a hit song, you know, mm. um, without a big yeah. TV show. Do you agree, Ben? I, uh, the cynical side of me says that these are TV shows designed by multinational corporations to make money. Mm. Um, and and they, don't, have, they don't care yeah. about yes. like the artist or mm. And or some of them have like had massive success, you <laughs> yes. know? Yeah. But they've, yeah, but some of them are just, I think they, 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 rely, they rely too much on the label or they rely too much on the show to make them succeed. Mm have a longer career, do you know what I mean? But mm. at the end of the day, you've got to put the effort yourself. Because you know? that's one of the arguments I hear from a yeah. lot of artists is yeah. that they've done the hard graft. They spent years performing to get where they yeah. are and mm. suddenly these reality shows yeah. hand the performers and the people who go in yeah. for them it on a plate. But, but you know what? It's mm. not on a plate. Yeah. Because they have success for that period of time mm. and then they find it hard to transi like transition into having a, you know, a success on TV mm. or whatever for three months and then they have to go to normality mm. where they have no help or they have no guidance. You know what I mean? They so, haven't had to struggle like yeah. a lot of performers. And then a lot of them do, sadly, they do get mm. involved in drugs and like you see with a lot of those um, stars. Mm. Um, and because they don't know how, it's, it's like one extreme to the other, you know? Um, I guess for us, so we grew up working hard, we, you know, it, even, even if you got signed to a label, it doesn't guarantee you anything. Mm. You still, you know, you still got to make the network yourself. You still got to make it happen. Ben, what kind mm. of venues do you perform in? Oh, a lot of them are, um, uh, you know, pubs and clubs. Mm. Um, we're starting to get into the uh, the bigger festivals now and the bigger stages, and uh, which is great. Um, but yeah, pretty much, pretty much like you know, I love the the old golden years of Australian rock. You know, the the pub scene. That I, I kind of really enjoyed that. Like cultures or um, that kind of yeah, era. all of that sort of stuff. Mm. Uh, you I, don't I see love much of that, that anymore. No, and it's a sad, it's a sad thing about the um, the industry, you know, particularly okay. here in I Sydney. Don't, you I don't know, really cares. Like you mm. don't, you don't, you don't see, if people don't really go. Oh, I want to see a live band. Like people just adapt to DJs, and it's a case of evolving, like, is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, it's just evolving, but it's just, it's just it, life changes. You just got to change with it. Yeah. It's sad. I'm getting the feeling, Ben, you're not. <laughs> Such oh no no because I yeah I'm I'm sad that those days are gone you know it's kind um, of but you know what? at least you live through it at least yeah. you've got to experience it mm. yeah. that's that's the reality of it it's like the new generation don't experience what we experienced back then so look at it as a positive yeah, <laughs> yeah. who are your role look models Rocco um you know what it it just changes like I think my mother was one of my biggest role models and, and my parents and um. Just everyday people. It doesn't. Have, they don't have to be stars or anything like that. It's just people who do have kids and people who do work hard and you know. Just for me, it's like people's real life struggles yes. really inspire me more than yeah. Someone who's got money and tries to be yeah. Ben. Yeah. Oh, I've got many. Um, Go on. And my parents. You mentioned my yeah. parents. I don't know that. Um, my parents were fantastic and. Um, mm -hmm but they didn't want me to get in the music industry. Really? Uh, so I didn't get any support. Um, Why was that? From, well, you know, you've got you to get a haircut and get a real job, yeah. you know? Yeah. That kind of thing. <laughs> um, a pragmatist, really. So, you know, I would look up to um, uh, the, the artists that I wanted to be like, you know. Um, you know, Jimmy Barnes and, you yeah, know, that kind of thing. I love yeah. Jimmy Barnes. Springsteen, mm -hmm. you yeah, know, all of that. It's from the heart. The yeah. music is very raw, it's very real. Yeah. Yeah. And Rocco, yes. what are some of the biggest challenges you have faced in your music career? Um, I think, I was, it probably sounds wrong, but anyway, but I think also growing up in the teens, being ethnic, it was yeah. very like, just yeah, trying to get signed to a label and... The Italian heritage, am I right? Yeah, it's just, you know, back then I was very, you know, trying to get signed in Australia was... You know what I mean? I thought they would have given you an edge because you're exotic. No, no, you know? but you know what? But back in the day before that came in, like, you know, before JLo came out and mm -hmm. all, you know, all these ethnic people started becoming famous um, worldwide. But um, I think, yeah, it was, it was just, you know, from a struggle just to, you see all the other people get signed and mm. I was like, why are they getting signed and, and, and stuff? And you know what? It just, it just, you just got to work hard and just make it happen. Mm. You got to network. 
Ben Hart, how are you? Yeah. Um, sorry, <laughs> throw it at me again because I got lost in the conversation. <laughs> it happens. It happens. I know. I always take it from there to there. <laughs> this is another dream state. And yeah. yes, as you say, it is about networking. It's often. That's all it is. Yeah, it's got it. Yeah. My question was, what have been some of the greatest challenges you've faced in your music career? Ah, uh, right. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I suppose it's just finding the right path. Mm. You know. Um, as a kid, you go, oh, I just want to be famous. You know, I want to be a famous rock star. But that's that's not how the music industry works and you're totally right about um, uh, networking, you, you surround yourself with like-minded people that, um, you know, have the goals that, that, you, that you have. Um, you know, go and spend time with bands, go and see, you know, bands playing, go and hang out with them and... Um, and also follow your instincts. Yes. Yeah. Like, don't waste time with people, just, I don't, know, don't get me wrong, like, hang out with bands and stuff like that, but sometimes, it's like when people go to me, we're going to hang out with DJs, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, if I hang out with DJs, you'd be up all night, basically, yeah. so you want to hang out with their management, you want to hang out yeah. with the people behind the scenes, because they're the ones that make it happen, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, so it's about just being smart of who you network with and... But following your instincts yeah. is quite interesting, yeah. because if it doesn't feel right, it, it might not right. be yeah. right. Yeah, exactly, but you have to go through your life experience and... If you know, in doubt... Leave it out. Yeah, leave, leave it out, exactly. But you know what, if you are in doubt and you make the mistake or whatever and you learn from it, yeah. then then you've learnt from it and then you will hopefully won't do it again. It makes you, you know? stronger yeah. and even a, maybe a better performer yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So have any of you had any strange kinds of fans? Um, any obsessives? <laughs> I've had a few. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're all you strange, if they're, you know, but yes, yeah. they, they're your fans at the end of the day, so. You get groupies? Yeah, I had underpants thrown at me the other day. <laughs> you lucky yeah. devil. That was at the ABBA festival. Wow. And most of my fans don't wear underpants. So. <laughs> I get Zimmer frames thrown at me usually, you know. <laughs> oh, people, they love me. They love it. The grannies. Oh, the the knitting hot. nanas. Yeah, that's hot. Yeah, yeah Zimmer frames Milk. all over yeah. the stage. Exactly. Yeah. Now, you've been working on a new single, In My yes. Shoes. Yes. Tell us about that. Um, that song, um, <clears throat> yeah, I was, I was going through the whole life of just transitioning of who I was and getting rid of people that I didn't want, you know, just naturally yeah. just letting the universe, mm -hmm. you know, work itself out for you. Um, and I guess the song was about just, you know, people don't really know what it's like until they walk into your shoes, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Very so true. I just found a lot of people are judgmental yes. um, and they don't really think about the other person, how they're feeling or mm -hmm. they don't see it from another perspective and, mm -hmm. you know, and it's fine, you know, everyone can see how they want to see life, but... um. I guess I just wanted to, yeah. So basically I wanted to work with an Indian artist um, and I just let it happen naturally. So mm. a guy from India contacted me through Facebook and we've been speaking to each other for about a year. Um, and he was great. He was just like very supportive when my mum died and I was going through all their struggles. Um, and it was just nice to be reached from some, a stranger from overseas mm. to see how I was every day and, you know, didn't ex wasn't expecting anything from me or or anything like that, just a genuine person. And Good from luck. that, yeah, so from that, he um, contact, he introduced me to a singer, um, songwriter, Kapasha in mm. India. And um, we started beginning this track together and we finished it and got to shoot the mu music video in India. In Best Delhi. of luck. Yeah. How exciting. Yes, it's good. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, I, I love it. I'm very yeah, proud of this song. So One of my wait. little spies yeah. told me you used to be in a boy band, Gemini. Yes, Gemini, yes. It was oh. a male duo and... Um, that's why we won this competition on um, the Hot 30, mm. and then we got signed to Warner and stuff, and we went on a uh, tour with Human Nature and Bardo, a support act. Um, it was great. Like, we got to experience, you know, the whole media, like, doing interviews and, you know, when you're, you know, sitting in one room and different mm. people come to different appointments. Gentlemen, you know I it was just different. Oh, heaps of fun. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> and then we got to do, like, Channel V bus and... Amazing. So, yeah, yeah, it was just a different experience. What an experience. To what it is now, you know, mm. so I'm glad, I'm grateful that I got to experience that. Yeah. And we're grateful you got to experience it too. Thank you. <laughs> ben, yeah. am I right in thinking there's an album on yes. the horizon? Yep, uh, we're right in the, in the middle of uh, working on that and um, a little bit to go, so it'll probably be finished in, a, in the next few weeks or so. The um, bulk of it was recorded in Nashville. Um, I wasn't here, uh, oh, sorry, I wasn't there, rather. Uh, we did all the pre-production here and then the, um, they went and um, did it over in the States with the fantastic session musos and they come back and we're sort of finishing it off now. So uh, this will be the, um, uh, the third studio album and um, 
Yeah, super excited about all this. Very exciting. Mm. Well, good luck with that. No, thank you. Now, you're both such busy people. I don't know how you find any time to do anything else apart from music or outside the music world, but what are your outside passions, your hobbies, well, your pastimes? I, um, uh, well, I like science and science-based science. stuff. And, um, any area yeah. of science in particular? Oh, just, just all of it, really, mm. yeah. Um, uh, my... Uh, day job. Uh, I work in anaesthetics as an anaesthetic nurse, and uh, that's <laughs> casual. Yeah. And so, um, so I'll move around different hospitals, and you know, you're my work and beers and stuff. I've had and a lot of it. cannulas put in over recent years for oh, dental yeah. work and shoulder yeah. work, and but I always faint as the anaesthetist puts in, you know, the cannula and then yeah. in the needle, and I'm like, I'm out very quickly. But I just yeah. cannot handle it. Well, I like, uh, yeah, I just like science and reading and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. How do you overcome needles? I oh, don't bother me so much. Any you know, advice for somebody needles. like me who's an absolute <laughs> needle? I hate needles. I hate them too. I think it's oh, the thought. It's out. the thought of it, you know. I enjoy mm. it. Yeah. I don't have people uh, do it daily. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you and I aren't fainting yeah. from needles, yeah. what are your pastimes? My pastime is to do everyone's head in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've succeeded! <laughs> I'm out of here. No, you know what? It's just my part. I, I, I love like. I love networking, I love going out, I love just, you know, I love meeting new people. I always think, you know, you always meet someone new who's adapting to your life or where you are now. Do you know what I mean? So, and I just, I love, yeah, bringing things together, just the process of life. And you've, yeah. well, we've all been brought together today. Exactly, it was meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> ben, what are your plans yeah. for the future? Well, uh, we'll get this album done. Um, I think we've got about six singles lined up um, from this one, which is cool. Uh, the next... 18 months, hopefully, we get over to those markets like the US and, and Europe. Um, yeah, we'll see where, where we go with that. Well, best of luck. Rocco, your mm. plans for the future? Well, I have a lot going on. Um, but basically, yeah, I'm probably going to move to Europe um, probably after eight, um, August, after the single, when the single gets released. Where will um, you be based? Um, probably be based in London. Um, and you yeah, have a new, so I've got a fashion label coming out. Um, Tell us more. Yeah, so I've, it's going to be called Rocco, so it's a new um, menswear. Um, so yeah, so basically I'm just creating my own brand and... I'm going to have to hit you up for that because I need some <laughs> yes. fashion advice. <laughs> you you and me yeah. both. Yeah. I've always been involved in fashion and it's just, I don't know, it's just something I've always... You, you know, you either have the eye for it or you know what I mean? Mm. You kind of know your style and... Of course. Yeah, yeah, so it's, um, yeah. Have you got any particular style that you like, or as you are right now? Um, just how, you know, just wear what you want to wear. It's a great don't, look. don't look at fashion like you have to be like everyone else. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's fashion is an expression of who you are. Back you know? to your music. Yeah. What advice do you give budding musicians? You know what? Live your truth. Network. Be grateful. Be uh, respectful. And enjoy the process. Of it. Enjoy your journey with it. You know, if, even if it's up and down. How about Best you, Ben? About it. Yeah. yeah. Um, never give up. Yeah. Yeah. Never give up. Yeah. Just, just follow your dreams. Mm. Is there anything in your music career, Rocco, that you regret? Um, no. You know what? No. Nothing. Not at all. It's like everything I've, I've done everything with respect, and mm. you know what I mean. It's yeah. I've just, I, I've actually appreciate my journey, to, even though I'm not signed to a major label mm. now, and back then I was. It's like I appreciate that I'm actually not signed to a major label. Do you know what I mean? I appreciate the pre now that I get to choose and work with people mm. I want to work with and you have your vision and... Would you have done anything different though? No, nothing. No. How about you, Ben? Any regrets? Uh, yeah, I wish I'd started earlier. <laughs> um, <laughs> you were 15! Yeah, oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it should have been six, <laughs> um, but um, uh, yeah, 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 list, listening, yeah, 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 listening to too many negative influences saying that you can't do this. Um, just, just do it. it. Yeah, yeah, just do it. And don't listen to anyone else. No, and be um, your own and, person. And, and and thinking in terms of chasing fame, that's mm. not that's not yeah, what it's about. Not. That's not what it's about. No. Um, so um, I think yeah. fame is a business. Like it is. Fame is like a brand. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's how you're looking at it. So you either be a brand or you be an artist. Like it's just you can. I mean, it can be both. Mm. But it's just it's how you it's how you want to be in life. How you want to leave your you know your mm. mark in the world. And my final question is: What can the music industry, Rocco, yeah. do to make itself more welcoming to new artists? You know what? It's just 
it's already opened it for the new artists. Mm. Like there's, it's, it's a lot easier now to get yourself out there than what it was back then. So, mm. you know what, take the opportunity and just do it. What would you say, yeah, The digital age has certainly opened it up to yeah. um, new artists and uh, there's a, a lot more avenues, you know. Mm. Um, the gatekeepers are gone, yeah. And um, so, and you know, YouTube or whatever, is, yeah. it, there's mm. so many um, different ways of sort of, you know, yeah. getting out there. It's sadly just, <coughs> you, know, you invest, invest yourself. The, Do you know what I mean? That's how it works. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. The, the genre that we've fallen into, the country music genre, is uh, very welcoming as well. And they've mm. got, uh, you know, um, really uh, fantastic fans, and they're all very welcoming. And mm. so, um, so I, I do find that, um, you know, for the young people coming through, uh, they are very lucky. Yeah. Mm. Why is country music so popular here in Australia? Oh, I don't know. It's just, just cool. It's just, um, I don't know. I, I have to I'll have, have a think about that. I mm. ask that question before to people. They always say, it's a tough question. Yeah. And of course, you're electro dance. Yeah. Why is that so popular? Is it popular? Everything's gets popular. the blood pumping. It's you know just I mean? like, it's, it's yeah, just, every, you know, every, like, the adrenaline. It's just fun and upbeat. Yeah, and every, everyone, everything has their popularity in their own world. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because we because I'm like involved in the country music. Yes. I don't get to see how popular it is. Mm. You know. Yeah. Well, Rocco Bene. Yes. Ben Ransom. Thank thanks you. so much for joining us Thank here you. on Thank Hear the Music much. on the panel show live from Douglas Park. And I believe we can't let you go away because you're both brilliant musicians. You're fantastic at what you do. You are Australia's great talents. And I think Ben, you're going to give us a Thank couple you. of songs. Thank you. That was a big rap. Yeah. Can't let you go. Away got, yeah, I could do a song. And in fact, so. Um, you were talking about uh, your mum passed away yeah. a couple of years ago, and similarly, my mum did a little while ago. And um, and so I uh, wrote a song. This is actually on the new album. And in fact, you know that Wendy Matthews song. Yeah. I, I did hear a rumor that that um, nearly didn't make it on her album. Oh really? The yeah. first time, yeah. Well, you know, a, that song was originally a dance song. Did you know that? Right? No, I did yeah, not know so that. So that song was actually originally sung by was someone it? else. Yeah, before yeah. I went to Wendy Matthews. So there you go. Yeah. Well, I, I had written a song. And it's um, pretty much about, um, I, I didn't want to do a, 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 a slow song, I wanted to do a fun mm. song. And, um, and, and I started thinking about how, you know, with all the variables in life, yeah. uh, how is it that we actually get this far, you know? Mm. Um, and it's the, you know, pearls of wisdom that your, your parents, in, you know, give you. And uh, so I wrote a song. <laughs> Uh, about that, and it's called uh, My Mama Said. Let's hear it. Okay. Sometimes I wonder how I'm here today. I still remember what my mama said. The pulse of wisdom still lying in my head I still remember what my mom said Sit down beside me, take this to your grave I learned the lessons that my mom said Food, sex and shelter is all that you need The human condition, so my mom said Hey! Get up on your feet and swing to the rhythm and dance to the beat and hey, live life for today. I should be okay, cause my mama said. some good days and you have some bad but how you back up that's what makes you a man so never think that you'll be better out dead and i should be okay because my mama said hey the world's at your feet so swing to the rhythm and dance to the beat and hey live life for today i should be okay because my mama said Got some things left to learn. I know that you need it. I know I'm still here. And oh, I'll remember these final words. 
Be good to your brother, be good to your dad, be good to your sister, they're all that you have. No, I'll be watching till we meet again, so never forget now what your mama said. Hey, the world's at your feet, so swing to the rhythm and dance to the beat. And hey, live life for today, yeah. Cause your mama said Your mama said Ben Ransom and Rocco Bene. Have you got another song you could give us? That was so amazing. We can't let you go. Um, One more song, please. I, I can do. Even a song, even a chorus and a verse. All right. Whatever you've got. One more B? You're too good. <laughs> you get a five, just give us a song. There's this song about when I got kicked in, into a pub in Cessna. Why did you just buy one of it? I'll tell you what I want, really, really, really want. <laughs> I'm up for that. On Nicky Webster, Strawberry Kisses. My fa I've got the single. Yeah, I've got the single. Strawberry Kisses. <laughs> strawberry Kisses. <laughs> oh, I'm flying from the sky. <laughs> yeah? I'll catch you. <laughs> yeah, right. Song Ben. All right. <laughs> Give me Wait, one reason. more B, then I'll be on my way. Give me one more B, then maybe I might stay. Cause the more I drink, the better you look. And baby, you can make my day. Give me one more B, and I'll be on my way. Thank you. Wow, Ben Ransom, Rocco Bene, I've been William Broom, I am still William Broom, here on the panel shows, hear the music, live from Douglas Park. Until next time, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>